it is time for another card review. Blizzard has released a more cards for the Rise of Shadows Hearthstone expansion, which means that I am back and it is time to review these cards. There are seven new cards, so get ready. The first card I'm going to go over is a five mana epic spell in the Paladin class, and it is called Duel. It is time to. I'm sorry, I don't. Um, it's a Yu Gi Oh reference. Never mind. This card states, summon a minion from each player's deck, and then they fight. It's like a mass hysteria in a way, but I think it's very more like a, another dirty rat, but from the deck. Kind of like the Hecklebot that we saw last time. You could break combos with this, or you could just pull out a weaker minion and kill it. A stronger minion and deal some damage to it, so then maybe you can finish it off. So then you can deal with something when you're ready, and not have to respond to your opponent playing that big thing. Also on the flip side, you get something from your deck as well. So this could pull out some sort of combo pieces. I don't really know if Malagos is wanted in Paladin right now. I'm sure there's other situations situational things that you can get your bigger minions out for cheaper. You could use this to pull out some death rattle stuff as well. There is the new death rattle dragon and there's probably going to be more death rattle cards in Paladin or in the neutral class that'll be released throughout the year or the rest of the set. That'll make this be able to trigger some sort of death rattle synergy, assuming that it's weak enough to die when they fight. And again, I think the most important part of this is the fact that you pull something out of your opponent deck and are able to deal with it you when, when you are ready to deal with it instead of having to be reactionary to your opponent you can be proactive of course there is a downside that your opponent pulls out a stronger minion than you do your opponent then has a bigger minion on the board that that killed your littler minion but hopefully you're smart enough to play this when you have enough board presence or say like an equality or a consecration or a shrink ray or something else to make it so that you can easily get rid of whatever minion that your opponent gets pulled out and hopefully you get to keep whatever minion you get to pull out from your deck or there is a good thing that happens like a death rattle when it dies so I'm gonna give this card three stars pretty solid it has some fun implications and uh, can probably do some pretty interesting stuff with deck manipulation and some sort of death rattle synergy from your deck the next card is a six mana epic neutral minion its stat line is five six and it is called unseen saboteur ben do you want to read the battle cry for us yeah sure your opponent casts a random spell from their hand targets chosen randomly that is very interesting again the third card in the set so far that is hand or deck manipulation first it was hecklebot then it was duel the previous card and now it is this unseen saboteur basically if your opponent is holding combo pieces that are spell related, such as a Malagos situation, you force your opponent to play this. You force your opponent to play the spell. Ben, do you think it's gonna be good? I think that if OTK decks that revolve around spells are gonna be relevant in the meta, then I think this card will definitely be played as a combo breaker. Right now, the only thing I can think of is something like Malagos Druid or Malagos Rogue. In both scenarios, we aren't really seeing a whole lot of them but the meta could definitely change and potentially with all of these cards like geppetto joy buzz then potentially we could see this card being played to counter the malagos combos that is definitely a good point and i wholeheartedly agree with you on that one if malagos is going to see any sort of play in this new meta being destroyed because baku and gen are leaving the meta is going to be super different you're not going to see all these even in odd decks anymore. A bunch of cards are rotating that saw a lot of play in the current meta. We don't know if any sort of Malagos OTK decks are going to be relevant. If they're in the top win rate decks based upon getting tons of Malagoses like Malagos Druid or Malagos 
Rogue that I'll come, I've seen a little bit on ladder, then this card will definitely see some play. So this is very meta dependent. If the meta involves a lot of combo spells, this will definitely see play and it will be fantastic. If the top decks aren't Malagos, spell damage, or something along those lines type of decks, then this card definitely will not see play. So I'm going to give this card two stars because I don't think that Malagos is going to see a whole lot of play in this new meta, but I could be totally wrong. The next card is a 2 mana epic in the priest class. It's a 2-2 and it is called Shadowy Figure and its battle cry is transform into a 2-2 copy of a friendly death rattle minion, which is interesting. It's going to be a 2-2 for 2 no matter what. Death rattle priest is definitely a thing, but because the quest is rotating, I don't really know if we're going to see a whole lot of death rattle priest anymore because there isn't really a payoff. Ben, what do you think? I think that this card can be really interesting in wild, potentially, just because there's so many other death Death Rattles in Wild, and now that the quest is going to be into Wild, then this could see play in Wild to get those quest ticks going. Yeah, for sure, but nobody cares about Wild. I don't think this card is going to see much play. I don't think it's going to be super fantastic. The main part of the Death Rattle Priest synergy is gone, which was the quest. There's a lot of Death Rattle cards that are still in the Priest class in Standard, but there's no real incentive to play those besides the fact that you just get value off the Death Rattles, and I think that there's going to be a different Priest meta, and because of Mass Resurrection, I think the Resurrect Priest will still be relevant, and I don't think Death Rattle Priest, because the quest is leaving, is going to be relevant, so I don't think this card is going to really see any play, because you there's no reason to have, like, four Loot Hoarders in a deck, because you could, like, copy a Loot Hoarder, or you can copy, like, the one Death Rattle Mech, you can copy the Lackey Generator for the Priest class, which is also a Death Rattle. I don't see a reason for you wanting to play more than two of the same Death Rattles just for the Death Rattle value, so I think this card is going to fall short. So I'm going to give this card two stars. It's not terrible, but it's going to fall short. There is a new legendary, and it is really pushing Paladin in a very specific direction, and I am so goddamn excited about it. Ben, are you excited? Oh yeah, I am super excited. Let me tell you guys, this is a 10 mana legendary Paladin minion, and it has a 412 stat line, which is really good. And it is called Nozori. Its battle cry states restore both heroes to full health. This is a dragon, by the way, which is very important in the Paladin class now. That is absolutely correct. It is very, very important. This really supports two archetypes right off the bat. We get another dragon in the Paladin class, so that is fan-freaking- Fantastic. This can be buffed with Dragon Speaker as well, which makes it a 715, which is mind-bogglingly crazy. Aside from the obvious Dragon synergy going on here, it also supports Heal Paladin, which is very interesting. They tried to push that in the last set in Rastakhan's Rumble with new cards that gain benefit from healing, cards that heal you and the legendary troll lord guy who destroyed all of your health and turned it into armor. Unfortunately, if this was seven mana, I would say this is really fantastic and you would be able to destroy all of your health, turn it into armor, and then restore yourself back to full, but you're probably going to take some damage by turn 10, so possibly not. Also, the new twin spell for Paladin gives things lifesteal, so that's a way to survive to the late game for Paladin. I think this card is going to be pretty, pretty good in a mid-ranged deck that wants to get to like turn 15, turn 20. Doesn't really matter about your opponent's health until you start to really just wear down your opponent with the amount of dragons that you're playing, the amount of of healing that you're doing. So I think that this could be interesting in a heal dragon paladin deck if those two archetypes were able to combine. I think that this card is going to be really powerful though just with that stat line and dragon synergy and we'll see if the heal synergy kind of gets tied into it as well. So I'm going to say four stars. Next we have a new four mana hunter spell at the common slot called marked shot. This is some really cool art actually. I like this. It states 
deal four damage to a minion discover a spell now ben you know what this reminds me of immediately oh yeah this reminds me of flanking strike for sure flanking strike was deal four damage for four mana and get a three three wolf now this if nothing else showed you that the design philosophy at Blizzard has changed. This card should really show you this is an exact copy of Flanking Strike. Except for the fact that it has its new philosophy when it comes to card design instead of their old philosophy. Flanking Strike was very much about board presence and creating a board which a lot of the last two years has been about. Odd Paladin, Secret Hunter, Secret Mage, Secret Paladin, all of these cards are all about getting board presence and building a board. And this new set is all about generating value and having hand resources and that kind of thing. So this is this set's and this year's flanking strike. That being said, which is better? Having a 3-3 body or discovering a spell? I would say discovering a spell. Hunter spells are generally pretty all right. There's a lot of secrets that you can discover that is pretty good. Another thing to keep in mind is the new Hunter legendary minion that gives you the plus two spell damage after you attack weapon. So this could then turn into a six damage spell for four mana and you get to discover another spell and after you discover that other spell then you could potentially discover another damaging spell that also has the plus two spell damage so you can continue to get value off of that. I think this is going to be better than flanking strike. Seeing the shift in the way that Hearthstone is going to be played from a very board heavy game taking it back and doing a very value hand resource based game which i personally prefer uh, i'm bored of the, the just the giant board stuff i like this card and with the new style i think it's going to work very well and it's probably going to be better than flanking strike if i'm going to be honest so this is definitely going to see play five stars fantastic it's a, it's it's the new flanking strike so we have a, another legendary. This is a eight mana priest legendary with a six eight stat line and it has a continuous ability that states at the end of your turn, summon a friendly minion that died this game. Really again, pushing res priest. Even after spellstone is rotated, we now have mass resurrection. We now have this card, which I keep doing this. I keep forgetting the names. Katarina Mutineer. I'm sorry, I'm ignorant. It is pronounced Katrina Muerte. This reminds me of the one card, I forget what it was called, but it, it rotated a while ago. But basically it was summon all of the, summon all of your minions that died this turn at the end of the turn which was pretty cool and pretty interesting. I was not playing when that was in standard, so I don't know if it saw play. That's an interesting effect, and obviously it's at the end of the turn. You can't then Divine Spirit, Divine Spirit, Inner Fire, like a Res Priest would want to. They, you would usually like to spell stone and then wait a turn, and then whatever survived, they would go Divine Spirit, Divine Spirit, Inner Fire, and probably kill you. So it can't do that because it's at the end of the turn, but this definitely is good, and uh, Ben, do you want to tell them why yeah definitely i think this is going to be good because this makes your opponent have to deal with two things right off the bat katarina mutineer has to be dealt with or else your opponent's going to have to continuously deal with a new threat every turn so i think that a big wall res priest deck is definitely going to want to play her that is absolutely true you brought up a good point that i didn't think about at first if you can bring back like big wall taunts she will survive the minion onslaught that she would see if she resed something that wasn't taunt so definitely big priest wall priest taunt priest however you want to call it is going to run katarina and mass resurrection is going to really help that as well big taunt wall res priest with the divine spirit divine spirit inner fire to finish out the game is definitely still an option i think and it's looking even better than before with some of these new cards and now Katarina coming into play so four stars this is a very very good card obviously you have to build your deck around the type of minions that you want to have resurrected but we have already seen priest do that anyway so that is fine so I think this card is definitely going to be good and four stars so the last card that I'm going to talk about today is a 8 mana epic neutral minion called Batterhead and it is a 312 minion. Oh boy, that is a big 
big boy for eight mana. Immediately right after Katarina, I'm thinking. You can mass resurrection this boy and then later Divine Spirit, Divine Spirit, Inner Fire potentially. But also it has an interesting effect. It has a rush and after this minion attacks and kills a minion, it can attack again with no cap. This is a very interesting mechanic and idea that they're trying to work with here. It definitely has a lot of health so it can survive multiple attacks but will it be able to kill something i don't really know potentially maybe it only has three attack it can only kill things with three health or less one thing that i didn't really think about especially in the overkill cards is you don't have to do all of the damage at once if you drop this card and your opponent has a bunch of weak min weakened minions already you can just use this as a big board clear obviously doing some big brain math to make sure you don't accidentally kill batterhead before you're done attacking everything but this can definitely be an efficient board clear a lot of aggro minions have low health and if you manage to survive to till turn eight against aggro then you can probably drop this and clear their board of aggro stuff because the aggros don't have a lot of health and the three attack will most likely be able to kill them so a lot of versatility definitely an interesting and fun mechanic and i'm going to give this card three stars i think it's going to be played if there's going to be an aggro meta but i don't think that this set is really supporting a lot of aggro stuff and with the even and odd rotating because of baku and gen leaving that definitely significantly lowers the amount of aggro stuff as well. I just thought of this as well. You could put this into Paladin and play the one mana spell. Give this minion three more attack and that could then make this a 612 which is way more appealing for nine mana instead of eight mana being able to kill a much wider variety of things so putting this in paladin with those small buff spells could be an option if you wanted to do something like that as well but yeah i'm still sticking with three stars very cool effect potentially could see play so that is all of the cards that have been released on the 29th so hopefully you guys enjoyed if you did leave a like down below and comment what you guys think about these cards. I am really curious to know what you guys are thinking about this set. Please do join me in the Discord. There is a link in the description. Check out that. Come talk to me in the Discord. We're talking about the new Hearthstone set, the Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, the whole bunch of stuff. Because I do stream as well. I stream Pokemon, Hearthstone, Five Nights at Freddy's, Magic the Gathering, and a whole bunch of other games. So come check it out. Hit that subscribe button and notification bell to get notified when I upload videos and go live because I will be posting a video every single day because they're going to be releasing cards every single day and I will be giving up with it. If you want to check out the links in the description for social media, I have Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter and I post on there when I'm about to go live so I would super appreciate it if you would check that out as well. I sometimes post some other stuff on there but it is mostly like an announcement board for videos and live streams so go check that out. And if you want to support me monetarily, I would super appreciate it. I have merchandise. Go to the red button link down below or you can support me on Patreon and I would super duper appreciate it. Both of those links are in the description. And if you want to tip me while I'm streaming, I have tips set up through Stream Elements and I would super appreciate that as well. But other than that, Michael from Steven's Gamer is going to be signing off now. So one, two, three. Oh yeah.